Who's a beloved movie character that just, when you see them on screen, just fills your heart with warmth and joy? Huh. Sloth from Goonies. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't love Sloth? Everybody loves Sloth. <laughs> sloth. Sloth bringing people together still since the 80s. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. Putting my cans on, guys. Okay. This rocket ship's about to launch. Oh. How's that sound? How's my velvety voice sound in your oh. puffy little ears? Oh, s- smoother than carrot cake. Really? Oh, yeah. <sighs> carrot cake with icing or no icing? Oh, you got to do it with the icing. Whoa. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm that smooth? Yeah. Are you saying I'm like the new Sinatra almost? Oh, yeah. The summer wind came crashing in across your anvil and hammer. And cock seal. What's the little... There's another bone. It's the hammer, the anvil, and the cock seal. Your coccyx is in your tailbone. Coccyx. Coccyx. It's Costco. Co- Costco's, Costco's in your, in your tailbone. tailbone. Wow. And then... What were you talking about? The, there, there's the, the hammer, the anvil. And then there's the... It's the tiniest bone in the whole human body. It's called the cock seal, I think. The cock seal. It's, it's the third... It's the third little bone in that mixture in your ear. Okay. So I, I'm sorry. I, I, I wanted to get into the podcast, but since my voice sounds like the new Frank it's Sinatra so... and carrot cheesecake. Have you been wetting it lately? I think I've been dampening it at night. I put a, a, like a towel on it and a, I wrap one of those um, tampons with wings. I wrap the wings around it to oh, keep yeah? it moist. I can't get enough of it. The summer wind. Uh, Came crashing in oh. across your coxial anvil and hammer. I love booze. That's I saw Sinatra Wait, once. You, you, he, that wasn't in the song, though. I saw him in Vegas once. And he sang that on stage, that <laughs> line? At the Riviera Casino. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay. He had, he had sitting on one of the amps, he had a big glass of like... <laughs> Of uh, what's it called, Jack Daniels or something? It's yeah, like, it's yeah. like a golden copper colored booze. And I'm not kidding. The guy was in the middle of the song. He goes, he goes, luck be a lady tonight. I love booze. Da, da, da. And then he just <laughs> put it right back down. It was like the best thing I've ever seen. That's some, some, some classic Sinatra right there. Oh, it was classic. Oh, maybe he felt more com- Maybe he was looking at you. He felt more comfortable, and he didn't realize he was singing that into the mic. <laughs> uh, no, he knew. Like he, he held it up for everyone to see. I love booze. Just that he called it booze, too. Booze. I love You're it. You're a booze hound if you call it booze. Oh, I'm a L- L- Lorraine. Uh, what's her name? Elaine Boozler. Oh, I thought you were saying Lorena Bobbitt. Did you ever date her, Elaine Boozler, the comedian? I had a time, yeah. Yeah, how long did that go? Well, I was preterm. Oh, you were pregnant? No, before my abortion. <laughs> Jesus, ladies and Wow. Yeah, the podcast just officially started. Wow, uh, uh-huh, now that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you're on the Holland Highway Podcast, and uh, great guest today, like, such a good, look at, just, you can tell by the rhythm going through his body, the way he moves, like Saturday Night Fever, just had a oil party with John Cougar Mellencamp and the dumpster behind Dairy Queen, uh. I mean, just the, the way you move, <sighs> I picture John Cougar Mellencamp like all over you with linseed oil and oh, yeah. cabbage grease and stuff. I think I'm going to commit to these. I think you sound, Are you? You sound so good. Right. Because at the beginning, before we went on the air, I asked Waddy. And by the way, Jeremiah Watkins, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Comedian, musician, artist, podcaster. I mean, what else do you do, Wild Fingers? Uh, I don't but, You know, I had a nickname called wild thing when i was growing up i was called wild thing wild thing watkins and if you got lost did everyone in the neighborhood go where the where the wild things are remember the kids book i don't no sorry um but um before jeremiah watkins or waddy sat yeah. down 
Um, we were discussing whether he, he should wear the cans or if he wanted to wear the cans. And then when he heard my voice, I, I couldn't resist. I, right. Just, there's something that's going in. Like, I don't know. I never wanted your voice inside my ears so much. Right. Cause when you did our podcast, we go canless. Did we? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So you didn't really ever get the full flavor of my, uh, carrot cheesecake cords. The summer breeze. Mm. Uh, uh. I think there might be some nuts in that cake now, suddenly. <laughs> I have a nut allergy. Are you serious? <laughs> Dude, that sounded like an attic door creaking open. Do that again. <laughs> Sorry. Do that one again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Whoa! I might throw up. Yeah, I think you're gonna puke. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, let's have a drink so, so you don't puke. Okay, great. Um. Oh, cool. What's it? You do all kinds of sound effects. Yeah. Let me tell a little story and then uh, see if you can do the sound effects. I would. To I it. would love that. Here we go. Um. Some some 1920s radio right here. Yeah. Dan got out of his car. He slammed the door. Again. He started walking along the gravelly trail into the forest. He got into the forest, and all of a sudden he heard water dripping from above. He looked around and saw a waterfall in the distance. He ran through the forest, crackling on the leaves underfoot. Suddenly, he stepped in a bear trap. And shit, bear shit, I meant. Ah! It was a deep pile. And he stood there. As the waterfall dripped from above. But then he realized it wasn't a waterfall at all. It was elves in the forest and they were pissing on him as he stood there in the bear shit. That was a choir of elves. And then a bullet, a sniper's bullet, rang out of nowhere. And that ended the story. Great work, guy. Oh, thanks. I did my best. It's weird you got assassinated at the end. Yeah. I wasn't thinking that was going to happen in the story. It's usually happy endings rather than a sniper shot to the head and then our main character dies. Right. You're Here you are in a forest, the beautiful drippings of waterfalls and elf urine. You're standing yeah. in a big warm pile of bear shit. And who thought there'd be a sniper in the woods? There's a choir golden showering you. Oh, God. And then all of a sudden you're dead? What is this, heaven then hell immediately? Yeah. I mean, this is the beauty of, of entertainment, of drama, of being a writer. Yeah. The way you handled it, though. Sometimes you just got to go with it. Your commitment, your, your ability to not get too emotionally involved and step on the material. Well, you know, me as the Foley guy, you know, you can't be invested emotionally in it. You're just doing right. the sounds. Yeah. You're, you're the pilot, and I'm in the cockpit. <sighs> <laughs> wow bro yeah. you are good yeah yeah uh but you're a good guy you're a nice guy you know i've known you for years we do stand up together mm -hmm. and we we've done a few singing gigs together that's oh, that's yeah. where i first met you sing, oh singing yeah right the scat lounges yeah no but didn't we do the <laughs> didn't, didn't we do the uh the, uh, the that, comedy jam yeah, the comedy jam where yeah. we, we did like we sang War Pigs and oh, all these yeah. great songs. And oh. you were you were up there playing. Uh-huh. So we've known each other for a long time. And you've always been like the nicest guy. 
You're, you're just you, people. Look, I can look at you and tell you're a nice guy. That's how I feel about you, though. Oh, thank when you. I, when, when, when people see you in the halls and stuff yeah. like that, I feel like people are like, like at the comedy store and the clubs and stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like people walk by and you're like, they're like, that's a nice guy right there. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. a good vibe. That's a good feeling. But do you do you ever get angry? Like we were talking about that off camera. Have you ever had? I don't know. I'm I'm sure you have, but have you ever had road rage? Like, have you ever like been one of those guys that just ah? Yeah, I, I I got out of my car once. What happened, guy? He there. Was, Wait a minute. Before, first of all, what kind of car? What kind of car was I driving? Yeah, it was a '98 Acura CL. Okay, so he should have been mad at you, really. Yeah. Okay, but it was you who was mad. Yeah. What was he driving? Uh, I don't remember what this guy was driving. Could have been any worse than what you had, though. <laughs> it definitely wasn't worse than what I was <laughs> okay. driving. Are you sure you just weren't mad at yourself for the car been. you were I could were have in? been looking in yeah. the mirror yeah. and just, like, upset. Yeah. No. So yeah. so what was the scenario? Like, what led to you? But I want to hear about you getting out of the car, but what what led up to the moment? This guy just kept honking at me over and over. Okay. And there was a car in front of me, and there was traffic ahead. Yeah. And I just got out of the car, and I went to his window, and I go, nothing's moving up there. Yeah. What are we going to do about this? Yeah. And he was so freaked out that I had gotten out of my car. He thought that I was going to pull a gun on him or something. Really? Yeah, I think that people generally, if you get out of your car, then they think your your screws are a little loose in your head. Well, especially in L.A., man. Yeah. Because people, like, people, well, you'll get shot for honking at someone here. Right. So how did you resolve it? I mean, he stopped honking after I confronted him, and he was just like, okay, okay, okay. Did he roll down his window? No. Wow. It was one of those things where I was talking through the window. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Were you swearing and yelling? No, that's what also another thing I think that made it more creepy. I was just like, hey, nobody's moving up there. Yeah. Okay? So quit honking at me. What are we going to do here? And he's like, okay, okay, all right, all right, man, all right. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's almost sort of like a dad lecture. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Wow, wow. It happened to me once I was, here's, here's the scenario. I was out on a date with this hot girl. Okay. And um, we is were... Is this a true story? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a... Right away. What part don't you believe? The date or the hot girl? All right. I just or continue. Either. You know, it's fine. It's <laughs> yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like, like Harlan could get a date and Harlan could get a Great. hot girl. Let's go back yeah. to the elf story. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Power slammed. I did slam you about your car, the make of your car. It's so okay. You had to check me. I had you had to go you had back. To slam me immediately. See, you're, you're seeing the you're seeing yeah. the spark of uh, yeah. Slam versus slam. Yeah, slam balls coming back. By the way, what slam ball? Do you remember that? No. It's uh, it's a, it's full contact basketball on trampolines. Oh really? Yeah, they 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 shoot it in Vegas, and it's like this. It used to be a sport on like ESPN two in the early to mid two thousands. Whoa! Yeah, they bring it back. He said slams. I just I just thought of it. I wonder if they'll ever, ever bring it back for like you know they have the disabled Olympics. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see slam <laughs> slam ball slam for disabled. the wheelchair gang. Now, would the people slamming them would they be out of wheelchairs? <laughs> How extreme we talk? Well, they're in wheelchairs. They're all they're all in wheelchairs. Just like, wheelchairs bouncing. You're talking around. jousting in wheelchairs. No, I don't know what they do. Jump, just bouncing in a wheelchair because you got that extra weight with a wheelchair, so you're gonna go deep and high. So you're saying off of the ledge, push someone in a wheelchair so they hit extra hard on right. the trampoline, and then they're colliding in midair. Well, yeah, colliding and to add an element of danger, have ceiling fans. So, you really get your money's worth when you're watching the disabled powered slam or whatever. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, slam ball. Slam ball. Yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah. The DSB. <laughs> the disabled DSB. slam ball. <laughs> I feel like that'd be a hard pitch in a room to convince people, like, listen, we yeah. already have the name. Yeah. It's called disabled slam ball. And they're yeah. like, we're going to stop you right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We don't want to market it like that. Yeah. yeah. We want to be maybe the handy capable slam ball. You know what's great, though? Disabled people would do it. Like they would when, when, when you'd think that there's there's something they won't do, like like skiing, 
I saw one on TikTok the other day where a, a guy with no legs went off a ski jump. Yeah. Or water skiing yeah. or, or wrestling. Or like, I love that the disabled are like, screw you. I'm disabled. I can do anything you can do. Yeah. There's a professional blind skateboarder. Is there really? Yeah. Yeah. And he has uh, the, excuse me, the stick. I don't know what it's called. The white, the white stick. Yeah. The, the cane. Yeah. 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 He has that. Like he feels out all the ramps like with somebody. He walks around the skate park. Really? And then he'll, then he has it mapped in his head and then he rides around with the stick and he will literally hop on rails. He'll go off ramps. It's crazy. And he doesn't wipe out everywhere? I'm sure he, oh no, he does. I mean, he does, but then he, he perfects it. He lands it. Wow. He's it, determined. It's all like memory, mm-hmm. like what's that called? Memory perception or what's it called? Where you, your mind just almost plugs it Fills in. Fills it just, in. Yeah. Yeah. Memory retention or whatever it's called. Yeah. Holy God. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So even though I'm joking about like the the wheelchair power slam or whatever, yeah, yeah. they they do it. They probably they're do they're it. nuts. Yeah. They do they do dodgeball. They do I think I've seen uh, people in wheelchairs jumping out of like airplanes. Yeah. So anyways, I'm on this hot date, right, with this hottie. Right. Uh-huh. This is my road rage story. Okay, okay. <laughs> This is re- this is for real though. Okay, okay. So real. I'm driving around, and uh, it's going great. And you know, you know, I'm, it's the first date, so I'm trying to be Mister. You know, you always want to impress your date. They're yeah. they're trying to impress you. You're trying to impress them. So we're we're driving around, and this car cuts me off, and it was like a blatant cut off. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, you know what? She saw it. She saw me kind of flinch, and I'm like. I got to commit. I got to show her that I'm, I'm the guy, right? Mm-hmm. So we get up to the red light. I get out of the car. I said, hey, baby, let me take care of this, right? Push the door open. I get out, and I, I kind of walk towards the car with kind of like cross between like Clint Eastwood in the Enforcer mm-hmm. and a little bit of that, the, uh, the liquid Terminator guy from Terminator 2. Too. The, like a little bit of that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like... I'm like putting my chest out. You know how peacocks put the tail out? Like I'm You gotta puff it out. I'm displaying. Like so I'm I'm like walking up to this car and I look back and I see she's checking me out. She's like, oh, you know, that's my man. And I'm squeezing the buns a little, like I'm tightening my Oh the glutes. The the glutes just so my my, almost looks like my ass crack is smiling at her, right? Giving a little wink for yeah. what's to come later if she decides right? to step on the Harlan Highway. Bingo, baby. So daddy's like doing the walk. I'm like strutting. I'm, I'm, I'm displaying. And I get up to this car and I just, I did what you do. I just, I'm in the window. I'm like, and I, you know, normally I don't get that mad, but I wanted to show her that I was a tough guy. And I'm like, you motherfucker. What, who the fuck do you think you're messing with? You fucker. Get the fuck out of the car. You know what? Don't get out of the car. Fuck you. You know, and then as I'm yelling, I looked and I realized it's one of those on- autonomous cars <laughs> with no driver. <laughs> well, if you're going to laugh at my stuff. Have you seen them? There's these new, they got these cars now where they, they, they got the Ubers with no drivers. They got the Google cars. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm committed. Oh, yeah, you got to because she doesn't know that there's nobody that's right? not actually driving it. So now I'm, I'm like, holy shit. So now what I do is I pull some heat out and now, you know, I got a, I got an audience back there. So I got the, and I'm like, you motherfucker, get the fuck out of here. I'll blow your brains. You know, this type of thing. And then yeah. the light turn green, this thing goes. I put the piece back in. I strut back to the car. What's the piece? The, I pulled some heat. I pulled a gun. Oh, I thought you whipped your dick out. Uh, I did, but not at that moment. Later. Oh. Like much later. Okay. Like three years later when, when she finally let me... In when we were married, she was a virgin and she didn't want to do it, was it a, until we got married. Was it a big piece or a little piece? She said it was probably the biggest of all, all of, in all the kingdom. The gun? The, yeah. It's like a 78, a, 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 no, a, a 98 Magnum. That's a good year. Yeah. 
And so I strut back to the car and I sit down and I looked out. I said, let's go, baby. I took care of that. And off we went. So, yeah, I, I can road rage. Did the autonomous car ever say anything to you? No. Nope. Hmm. No. Nope. Just drove off into wherever it was going. Yep. I had one happen to me. Oh, here once. we go. What happened, guy? It's actually happened. I was in the sure. car with Stevie Weeby. Yeah. In San Diego, who you know. Yeah, Stevie Weeby. Yep. We, had, uh, we did a, a gig in San Diego the night before, and I was... Uh, Still kind of waking up in the morning, and I guess I blew through a stop sign that I did not see. But there is you a car. blew Stevie Weeby through a stop sign through the stop sign. What did he say? Stop. <sighs> well, you didn't actually. He would never say that. So you blew him right through the stop sign. Yeah. <sighs> and then what happened? Well, then somebody saw it, got upset because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going all over mm-hmm. the road. He's sure. going all over me. Mm-hmm. And uh, he starts to come out, and I, and I start honking at him because I thought that he was going to T-bone me, and, I, and he thought I was going to T-bone him. So you guys then, were, you'd just been shopping for meat? Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Okay. So, and then I'm like, uh, and then he's like, pull over. He was ready to, this dude was ready to, he's like, pull over right now. Whoa. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That uh, uh. He f- started following me. Whoa. Yep. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. What kind of car were you in this time? This one was uh, a 2012 Honda CRZ. Okay. Yeah. Probably not worth following, but but what did he look like? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. he, uh, he had a face. Eyebrows. Whoa. And Mexican. Whoa. Mexican with a face and eyebrows. They're yeah. the worst kind of Mexicans. Yeah, I know. Don't want to mess with the ones that have eyebrows and a face. I know. Forget it. So, so what happened? This is scary. I, I, I notice that he tries to start following me, and I bust a right down a street that he was already, he was trying to slow down and then follow me. And then, so I, I, I hit my brakes. I, I hit a, a different street and then I lost him. Oh, dude, were you terrified? Uh, yeah, there was. Yeah. Because this dude was ready. Like really, he wanted to fight. He legit wanted to fight. And it was seven or seven thirty in the morning. Whoa. And I'm like, how do you get that hot? That <laughs> yeah, early? Yeah, yeah. It's too early to get that hot. He was probably just leaving a cantina somewhere. You probably. know, he'd probably been up raging all night because of, the eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was he alone or was he with a posse? Full family. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, man. Just him. Wow. Just him. That's brutal, man. People need to calm down. Yeah. People need to calm down. Yeah. You know what I do to calm down? And I, I hope you enjoy this. But, and, you know, as artists, we have to push ourselves, right? Like you uh, do comedy, you do music. And, and if we didn't push ourselves in our art, we, it would just sort of stagnate, right? I agree. So one of the instruments, I don't play a real instrument, but you've heard of air guitar? Oh, yeah. So I do this thing. I wanted to push myself. And as you see, I don't have a chin. I was somehow born without a chin. I'm just sort of like very pelican-y. I have huh. a waddle. Hey, don't say that around me. Okay. But I have a this. Well, you... well. Together, you and I would make the perfect bird then. We would? Oh, because you got... I got the beak, you got the... (laughs) Wait, what would we... (laughs) What would we... (laughs) What would we call it? If it was a mixture of me and you, would it be the... The Har... Haramaya? Haramaya? Oh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Like, you go through the Audubon. There's the great auk. There's the dodo. There's the great blue heron. There's the mighty California condor and the haramaya. Oh. Oh, dude. I mean, every bird watcher would be nutting in their shorts, Um, getting ready to look at that thing. Dude. (sighs) You missed it. I didn't want them to see it. I know. You got excited about the haramaya. I I forgot about the foley. Yeah. You know what um, relaxes me sometimes? What? 
um, shaving another man's face. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, what do you got, guy? Oh, wow. Go ahead. What? You want me to shave your face? Yeah. Great. I was, you know, it's so weird because when I saw you, I was like, God, would I love to shave your face? Yeah. What side do you, what kind of cut do you want? That's up to you. Okay. You get to choose exactly what you want to do with my facial hair. I think I can tell you what I want in my velvety voice. Okay. Ziggy played guitar, jamming good with Spider and Gilly, and the spiders from Ma. So what I want for you, Waddy, is a David Bowie lightning bolt right through the side of that greasy, greasy, oily, salad dressing soaked beard. Okay. Get over here, you son of a whore. Wait, we better do this side so you can see it on camera. You really made the gray. My net of is blue, and there's nothing I can do. There's a, like, a, like a little zigzag lightning bolt there, guy. Take a look. Okay. I think. Sort of got it. Oh. What do you think? <laughs> Is it sort of? It just looks like. <laughs> Does it look like a lightning bolt? I mean, maybe after it already hit the ground. Let's see. Yeah. It looks like I'm transitioning from a female Wolverine to a male Wolverine. Yeah, maybe that's what I meant to do. The the tranny the <laughs> tranny the trannine. Yeah. I mean I could do more if you want it. Oh a Tui? Mm-hmm. <sighs> wow. That was worth it. Was it? Yeah. Okay, good. Two bucks, two bones. Two bones. Two bones to give you a Bowie fucking lightning bolt cut, guy. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks I think it looks pretty good. Okay. I mean, are you happy with it or no? Hey, if you're happy with the finished product, I'll leave it. It's sort of hot. Okay. As hot as that date you went on? <laughs> Jeez, there's nothing's hotter than that. Okay. That's as hot as a thousand suns. Wow. <laughs> Shizu. Yeah. Shih tzu. Yeah. Shih tzu, your fucking diaper. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I hope I did a good job on your face. I'm sure you did. Um, but I was going to say what I used to, to calm down is um, I, I, I learned to play the air violin. Because, I right, right, I have no chin. So it's oh. like I wanted to kind of figure out of you but i also want to do something to come so if you're cool with it i'd love to play you some air violin i would love to hear it okay hang on let me uh i gotta mime it all out let me pull it out a stradivera caster or oh, whatever they're called beautiful model right i just put it under my fit, lack of chin and bring out the bow and uh, let me play you a How do you feel? Pretty good. Calm? Oh, yeah. I think that put everybody in a good mood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what else calms people down, Wadi? What? Beloved characters. We're in the entertainment industry. It's true. You love movies. I love them. Who's a beloved movie character that just, when you see them on screen, just fills your heart with warmth and joy and just like, oh, and just the world seems... At peace. 
Uh, you know, this is a specific one, but it's um, it's Steve Martin in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Oh wow! As Rupert. Oh yeah, he was kind of like how did how did he go? Kind of like a <laughs> mentally challenged character, right? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. how did he talk? He was well. He's not quite this. Yeah. Excuse me. May I go to the bathroom? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that 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 just put the, everything at peace for you. Oh yeah, I love that character. Oh. When you just did it, it just calmed me down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's <sighs> banging on pots and pans. Oh, 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 oh yeah, oh, yeah, just. If you haven't seen that movie, it's with Michael Caine and Steve Martin. It's an old movie, yeah. but it's it, I've watched it a bunch with my dad, and it's like one of my favorites. Oh, it's class, yeah. classic. Um, my character is, guess who it is? Huh? I don't think there's any character that puts a smile on our faces and makes us feel more relaxed and beloved than Sloth from Goonies. Oh, that's a good one. Right? That big goofy nut, you know, this big puffy face. Oh, yeah. And I thought if we could, you know, we've been going at it here on the pod for about 20 minutes now. And yeah. I thought, what if we just switched gears, stop being selfish and making it about me and you, mm -hmm. and gave our viewers some sloth and just did a few questions to each other as sloth? Would that, would that feel right to you? I think that would feel I, great. I think it would feel great. Yeah. So let, let's do this. Here's... Put your sloth on, Wadi, and and here's three questions for you. And three questions for me. And I'm telling you, man. Oh. Isn't, doesn't the world just love this guy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Who doesn't love sloth? Everybody loves sloth. So I'll go first, and uh, I'll read my question, mm -hmm. and um, I'll do it as sloth. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have you had... Diarrhea. <laughs> I've had diarrhea at least once a week for 20 years. <laughs> hey, you guys. I got a question for you. <laughs> You ever used an electric can opener? Uh, an electric can opener? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Do squirrels like meatballs and ginger ale. <laughs> I know they like my nuts. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, hey. <laughs> Do you have a friend named Diarrhea? <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Do you ever have diarrhea on a helicopter? <laughs> this is what they call the spin cycle on the washing machine. You <laughs> guys. If a circus bear can ride a bicycle, can a turtle ride diarrhea? Yeah, you guys. Wow, dude. How relaxed are people going to be right now? <sighs> like, I'm, if people aren't just glowing right now, like they're probably sitting there watching the podcast and they're like, just like, wow. 
like calm, centered. Oh yeah. Like their core right now is probably just like. Oh, a Zen like we might have well have been doing yoga or ASMR or right? anything like to really make people feel enlightened and good. And I gotta tell you, I don't know how you feel. I'm gonna ask you, but I feel really centered inside. I feel really calm right now. Very oh, yeah. like leveled. I let out a lot of demons. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> Sloth. Sloth. Bringing people together still since the eighties. Right. Yeah. He's still bringing people together. Still after all these years. How, do, how does he do it, that gingivitis, halitosis riddled freak? I think there's a, there's, a, there's a little sloth in all of us. I think that's how he does it. When was the last time you had a baby Ruth? Wow. It's been a while, guy. It's been a minute, right? When was the last time you had a baby Ruth? Probably over 10 years. When was the last time you had Ruth Chris Steakhouse? I've never had it. It's time. Are we going after this? Do you want to? Yeah. Who's going to drive? I've got a 2012 Honda CRZ with your passenger seat warming up right now in the hot sun. And no one's getting in our way with you at the wheel. No way. I'm in. Let's go tonight. Okay, great. Hey, everybody. Check out my merchandise at harbling.com. Yeah, most people just slap some letters or images on a T-shirt or a hoodie. But not me. Yours truly. Guess what? I draw my own designs at harbling.com. You can see tons of my hand-drawn T-shirts Uh, You can either buy the original or you can buy a print. And uh, man, oh man, wear them loud and proud. Um, I love making these designs for you guys and uh, keeping it personal. So check out the whole uh, catalog. We got hoodies. We got coffee mugs. We got uh, T-shirts. You name it. It's there at harbling.com. Get your uh, Harland original design, wearable art at harbling.com today and uh thank you for your support and i'll just keep the uh the groovy images coming because i do there are certain songs that lift me up when i'm when i'm not feeling good oh like what um my lift me up song yeah or if something really good has happened steve winwood higher love why that one that's just there's something about Take it. me a higher love. That came out in the 80s, right? Yeah. And it just gets you. Hey, that song just gets me. That's my feel-good song. Really? Yeah, that's a... Yeah. I think it's because it's like an anthemic song, and it's like a feel-good. What's anthemic mean? Uh, You know, like multiple people, like singing, anthemic, like, like choir-like. I never even heard that word my whole life. Yeah. Is that a real word? Anthemic? Yeah. I look it up for the viewers. Okay. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's there. Huh. Huh. Glad I looked it up. Yeah. Um, but you play music, though. You play... I do. You, I do. You play, like, guitar or is it bass? Is it electric guitar or both? <laughs> I play... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not amazing at guitar, but I play guitar, piano, and sax is what I'm best at. I really? Yeah. I didn't know you played the sax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Sax is kind of sexy though, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. Oh really? yeah. Really? Have yeah. you ever used it on a date to like I know you're married now, but before yeah. did you ever use it as a tool of seduction? I mean, for other people, yeah. You did? I mean, when you play it, it gets other people horned up, but oh. I, I never received anything from it. <laughs> but did you ever try? Like, were you ever on a date? And you go, hey, let's go back to my apartment, and you <laughs> light a candle, and you're like... <laughs> did you ever... I, I, You know, I would have a date with me out. I would be at a restaurant. I'd, I'd play the sax, and thinking that the date was going to come home with me, and then she would end up going home with somebody else. No. Yeah. That happened? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. You, you got to be careful where you play sex. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah. 
Are you fl- are you real like super fluent at it, or is it? I mean, you know, I speak a couple languages. Really? Yeah. Like you could just wail on it, or are you kind of like a pr- like a practicing like kind of just. Oh no! I, I mean, so- I can I can play some fun stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm impressed, man, because I can't play an instrument. No. No, so I'm like, I mean, I can improvise a bit on the piano. Yeah. But I'm always jealous of, of people who have the discipline and the ability to learn an instrument. And you know, like four. Well, you've got a, you, you get that, that summer break. The summer wind. The summer. Came crushing in. The summer's eve. The douche the I use. use. Came crashing came in. Came crashing in. I love douche. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great ad for him back in the day. Yeah. Sinatra. The summer's Eve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sinatra did I a, love douche. Yeah. Sinatra does a douche commercial. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be good. That's a good one. You know, it's funny, too, because you look at the advertising world nowadays, and I wish people thought outside of the box like that. I know. Like, like just... And get inside the box with <laughs> Summer's Eve. <laughs> I love douche. But just like like you look at ads nowadays, and I was watching the other day, there was a Coke ad, and there's a bunch of kids like going around on a skateboard, and they're dancing, and they're all dressed in purple and pink and spiked hair. Yeah. And it, 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 it was like representative of the world we live in, but it just felt so kind of phony and glossy. Mm-hmm. And when you just did what you did, even though we were joking, I thought if a man walked out and did a fully committed to a douche commercial. Oh, so memorable. Like it's so memorable and it's so ridiculous that I think it would resonate with people. Yeah. And that's what they used to do with advertising. And now when I see an ad like the the flashy Coke thing... And I go, okay, well produced, visually it's moving, yeah. it, 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 it's done well, but it, it's so empty to me. Like it, it has no, it doesn't resonate. It, it just, it's just like, it's just like nothing, yep. right? And they probably put $20 million into it, but nothing to me in the advertising world seems creative and, and, and kind of standing out anymore. I miss like the Budweiser frogs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Bud, like Bud. Why? Uh, and the what's up you know you know like even though they were annoying you remembered them i mean we still years later that you know right you remember them and at least they were creative and they they created sort of almost a cultural moment that's what that's kind of what i like to do with my stand-up it is yeah tell me is like listen i might not be the guy that killed the hardest that night right there's a good chance you're gonna remember what i did yeah that's right yeah because you always do stuff that's sort of visual like that. Yeah. Like, the, what's the song you do the the, the, the the parody of, and then you just, like, butcher it? Oh, uh, Blink-182. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just, like, make the most ridiculous faces and just fucking keep going with the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's the stuff that, that's missing, you know? And I just, I find everything's, like, so homogenized and safe nowadays. Yeah. And that, to me, is starting to jump over into movies now. Oh, I know. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. movies definitely feel too safe, like they're not taking chances and stuff yeah. like that. Especially with comedy. Yeah. Yeah. What? So I have to, I'm going to, I want to share a story. And this, oh, is a real, this is a real Harlan story. Here we glow. This is a real Harlan story. So Harlan and I have known each other for years, and you could say that our love language is, is riff. riff yeah. Riffing is our love language. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but... There's some people that if they are not aware what's going on, they get really lost when you and I start talking. Yeah, like this whole last hour. Yeah. 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 So we're in the green room of the the main room of the comedy store, and you and I are talking, uh, and Tim Dillon happens to be in the green room with us. We're oh, all waiting to go Dilly. Up. Big mm-hmm. Dilly. They Big call Dilly. Him. Yeah. And you, and you say to me that um, you've fallen upon hard times, and that uh, you've had to take uh, work as one of the elves um, at the Grove during Christmas time to help pay bills and stuff like that. And I said, oh, okay, well, you know, any way I can help out? And he said, well, you could come by. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll come by with, with my son. Uh, what time should we show up? Um, and he said, 2.30. I go, okay, yeah, uh, we can, he can get up from his nap in the afternoon. And you go, no, in the morning. And Tim could not 
follow what was going on. So he had he really thought that you had fallen on hard times. <laughs> and he was looking at you like, he's like, is everything okay? <laughs> and you and I just kept going with it for yeah. the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just, it made me laugh so hard because he, like, it was like him watching a, a ping pong match yeah. and him genuinely. I remember and he was just like sitting in the corner like <laughs> yeah, yeah. big Tim and it was just us in this big green room in the back yeah <laughs> that's my favorite and you know what's funny I haven't done a lot of stuff with Tim in fact I think that was the first time I was ever sort of alone with him right in a room yeah so I think he didn't really know much about me in real in person. Yeah. Had you interacted with him before? I've known him for years, yeah. Okay, so he didn't yeah. really know what he was getting with me. I know, I know. Oh, that was so classic. it just like I was it was like joke upon joke, inside jokes for me yeah. because I like I'm like out of the corner of my eye seeing him not knowing what's going on and you and I just keep going for like ten minutes straight. We always do it. Whatever yeah. whatever we whatever <laughs> we meet, it's I doubt we've ever had a serious conversation. <laughs> no. no. I've actually made a point for this podcast my one of my final questions i'm going to ask a serious question because i i said when i sit down with wadi what's something i've never done with him and i thought i've never really asked him <laughs> yeah. a serious we, question we don't have serious conversations yeah. yeah but i thought i want to i want to ask you at least one question okay. this is a good set because you mentioned your son yeah so we're in a wild world right now you uh -huh. know whether it's politics whether it's social stuff whether it's you know, gender stuff, whether mm -hmm. it's violence, whether it's crime, whether it's defund the police, whether it's the Ukraine, like it, whether it's, it's AI, like there's, it seems like more than ever, there's a lot, there's like a tidal wave, a tsunami of crap coming at us. How old's your, your boy? Uh, so the first one is like two in a few months, uh, oh, there's two. Two, two and some change. And then the, the baby is, he's like five weeks old. Wow, so so yeah. my my serious question is because okay. I was really thinking about this because I knew you had I thought you only had one kid but you just had the the new one. Yeah. Congratulations by the way. Oh, thank you. But how does a dad and you're kind of a younger dad too, but how does a dad mentally psychologically prepare for that wave that's coming at your kid because you know, you know, when you and I grew up, there were probably little things that were different. Oh, mm -hmm. we didn't have fax machines. We didn't have this. But now it seems like there's this much difference between dads and their yeah. kids because shit's happening so quickly. Is that daunting to you? And how do you, how do you in your head, prepare your, your children? Honestly, this is the first I've thought about it. <laughs> So anyway, so uh, my dad's an ostrich. Um, he's down at the petting zoo. Do you want to go and see him later? <laughs> I should have just stuck with the bullshit. I mean, why did I have to ruin it? <laughs> no, I love it. No, no, I just got a wave of anxiety as as you as you as you started describing all the things all right. that I, and I have to talk to my son and stuff about. Oh. I'm like. I'm just trying to get by day to day right, right now. I know. Well, that's. I think that's why I asked because yeah. just for us on a daily level, and I hope I didn't cause any anxiety, but I'll be driving home just re <laughs> reflecting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Smash yeah, over yeah. the cliff. You're going to road rage on the way yeah. home. But, but I guess I just, I, I knew you had boys, and I knew you're a nice guy, and I thought, how, how do you, how do you get, get how do you get ready for that to talk to your kid about all this stuff? Is is it a daunting thing? Like, or is it just like, hey, just let it happen? I think it's more I think, well, for me, I think I have to let it happen. Otherwise, yeah. I'm I'm very good at compartmentalizing, sometimes almost to a fault. Okay. Where I I do I'm very in the present and very yeah. now. And sometimes I, I try not to think too far ahead with certain things. Why does that mess you up? I think that if you're too focused about like stuff that could or could not happen, yeah, that it's a waste of time and energy. Yeah, I think you're right. I think That's so. That's true. That's so, like, true. Because you can't alter it. You can't affect it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, you know, you try to set yourself up where, you know, you're paying your bills and stuff like that. Where yeah. you know, like, ahead of time, that kind of stuff. But as far as, like, relationships and that kind of stuff, I try to be, like, present and in tune to the now. So, like, as things happen with my son and he's starting to learn more. I'm kind of figuring that out. Cause I, like as he's becoming a kid, I'm figuring out how to be a dad and how to even talk to wow. a kid 
along the way. And right. then my wife is also helping me because she's like, she's amazing. She's like a social and emotional learning specialist. So oh, she's wow. like, she's like literally on the pro side of yeah. raising kids and, and interaction and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm just, I'm the. <laughs> you're just hanging in there. I'm the disabled slam ball guy. <laughs> And you're this close to the ceiling, fam. Real yeah. close to that ceiling. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you think maybe your wife's maybe better adjusted at dealing with the kids than you are? Yeah. Uh, on a, on a, a, like a psychological level, maybe? For sure. Yeah. Interesting. But I I can ground her in a way where I I can be like, eh, I think we'll be okay if we don't you know, yeah, don't yeah. put as much pressure on certain things. I see. So yeah. you can be a little bit of the anchor if she overthinks stuff. Yeah, yeah. And is there, and I'm again, I'm not trying to raise your anxiety level. I'm just curious. It, it, it fascinates me because I, I, I look around and <laughs> see all the hurricane of crap that sort of gets into all of our lives these yeah. days. Like there's a lot more than it seems there used to be. So, and this will be my last question, but is there one thing in particular you think that 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 kind of is coming at you and the family and the kids where you just go oh i I don't want to deal with that or that's going to be a tough one this particular thing or is it all just one big mishmash um there's not a there's not one particular topic or anything yeah well it'll be interesting uh it's more like just because i i grew up so, with such a religious background you did okay i did so oh but i think my wife and i i think we've kind of agreed that it's we're going to be kind of like pretty hands off and kind of like well what do you think like what do you like what do you want uh for religion you mean for religion what religion like is it uh i grew up a uh, protestant christian okay yeah yeah and was that religion kind of uh, one of those ones where you get the sense they're overbearing or overpowering oh, or? yeah so your parents I were kind of like as a kid, I was terrified of hell, like wow. terrified of hell. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Your name sort of feels like that too. Like you're kind, of, you're kind of remind me. Like did the, the I feel I know this wasn't the name, but in the, in the that movie, there will be blood. Uh huh. I felt there was um, the main guy. What's his name? And uh-huh. and then his son, his son who had no hearing or whatever, and I feel like his name could have been Jeremiah Watkins. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, you sort of have, like, you came from a, you're like a preacher's boy. Uh-huh. There's Jeremiah Watkins. That's He's Jeremiah. the preacher's boy from just over the hill and around the apple orchard oh, over there. You don't know Jeremiah Watkins? Oh, everyone know Jeremiah Watkins now. Oh, come on. He, he's spreading that good word of the Lord right there. Well, I saw him down by the creek the other day fishing for catfish, and he said to me, he said, son, I dare you to walk across this creek. And I said, oh, no, Jeremiah, only the Lord could do that. And Jeremiah looked me in the eyes. He said, oh, no, as long as you believe in the Lord, you can walk across the creek now. And I said, are you fishing for compliments? Because that was just pure molasses running down my ear holes right now. Mm, amen. Mm. Jeremiah Watkins. On the Holland Highway to hell. Wait, 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 what was our last part to hell? The Harlan Highway to hell. Oh, you really are scared of hell. <laughs> <laughs> Is it getting hot in here? Or are we in are hell? We in hell? <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you think it's a cancelable offense what? to do sloth face? <laughs> I can't. I hope so. I mean, if, if I ever get canceled. Can you imagine? Yeah, I hope. The headlines? <laughs> Two sloths Two canceled. Sloth. Two sloths. <laughs> <laughs> Look at He's a beloved character. Uh huh. That's how he sounded. That's how he sounded. That's how he looked. That, we're just doing an impression. We're actors. We're actors. And we were doing the character. Yeah, that's all that we were doing. But more than that, what we were doing, Jeremiah Watkins, we were bringing joy to, to the, the flower, world. To the to the world. Oh, I thought you were doing like a like a oh. like a three dog night. Jeremiah was oh, a bullfrog. Yeah. Oh, like joy, joy to, to the, the world. world. All, all the boys and girls. girls. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. Yeah. No, I wasn't doing that. Mm. I was doing uh, bringing joy to the flock. Mm. 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 Oh. Mm. 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 That's either two people in church, like, giving praise, mm. or it's two fatties at the Cheesecake Factory. I was just on thinking that. Enjoying yeah. some pie or a yeah. cheese. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
Mm, mm, mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm, mm. The Lord has blessed us with this, mm, this cheesecake right mm, here. Mm. Oh, give me some more of that icing. Mm. Mm, is that creme brulee? Oh, Jesus, slather it on my inner thighs, waitress. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> so anyways, is there one thing in particular that freaks you out coming at your... It, it would probably, uh, it's more like, um, well, <sighs> okay, if we're being real, yeah, it would be, I would have a pretty hard, there's like some, there's some alcohol stuff in my family. Okay. I, I'm going to approach it from, try to be as, as cool as possible. Right. But like, secretly, like. I would rather my son not drink at all. Right. Because my family has, like, issues with it. There's been alcoholism in your family? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And they say that can be hereditary, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, passed yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Did it affect you at all? Um, I've never drank, so it, it has oh, affected me. So it has affected oh, me on the, okay. and the inverse, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that really, that would be one of the only topics where I'm like, I don't even, I haven't even thought of even how to tackle or approach yeah. that. Because it would be easier if he's like, I don't want to. I'd be like, oh, what a relief. Good. You know what, though? I'll say this because I, th I think sometimes good parents set good examples. Mm -hmm. And my folks rarely ever, ever drank. Yeah. Like, rarely. And growing up watching them, it really made me very disinterested in drinking. Like, I, I, um, I, I never really have been much of a drinker, and many alcohols I've never even tried. Like, yeah. like hard alcohols. I've had beer. I've had a couple of wines. Yeah. Rubbing? But rubbing alcohol. I'll drink that all okay. day long. Yes. Yeah. Because I like to rub. Mm -hmm. One out. But, well, um, but, uh, yeah, so, so that, I get it. That, that's one you, you don't necessarily want your kid to get the devil's <laughs> teardrops inside of them. No, no. Yeah. Good for you. I'm glad you're... You, I'm glad you're cognizant of that. I was just watching an, uh, an interview with Letterman the other day, believe mm -hmm. it or not, on YouTube. Yeah. It was an older one where he was talking about how he started drinking at nine years old. His father gave him a mixed drink and said, here, son, try this, like just because his dad liked to drink. And David said he, and I'm quoting his direct interview, he said he loved it so much he never stopped. Wow. So he drank all through high school. All his buddies loved it. And then college where it got to a bigger level. Of course. And then he said out of college, his friends started dropping off, not dying, but, you know, you lose contact. And then he started to realize he was sort of drinking alone. Mm. And then he, he it was, I think he said he was like into his mid forties where he finally just went, I'm, I'm going to die if I keep doing this. Wow. But, but that sort of came right from his father, literally handing it to him. Mm -hmm. So hopefully in your case, like by, by not making alcohol a presence in front of the children, yeah. hopefully it, it doesn't pique their interest. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm glad I asked our first serious like convo ever. How do you feel about it? Pretty pretty rough. You do? <laughs> no, no, it's all right. Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, because we can stick to. I can never ask you another serious question ever. I think maybe we should live there. I think. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, you you want me to ask another serious question or no? Tell me about your childhood, Harlan. Are you serial? We're opening it up. We're opening it up. Okay. What do you want to know about it? Okay. At what age did you first feel shame? Wow, that's a great fucking question, man. Yeah. First feel shame. That's a really good question. Yeah. I remember there was a pivotal moment for me. I think I was... I don't know, it was probably like nine or ten or something. Uh -huh. And we're up at our cottage, and me and my cousin found a little frog. And I loved animals. I loved frogs. I loved everything. But for some reason on that day, like the Lord of the Flies got in me, and I just, you know, children are curious, and children want to know things, and children aren't inherently violent, but at some level we were wired violent, or we wouldn't kill, and we wouldn't have eaten, and we wouldn't have survived. So... For whatever reason, on this sunny morning, 
here was this cute little frog. And I said to my cousin, I go, what would happen if we poked a stick into its, into its stomach? And I don't know where that came from, but it was just a kid thing. And I was curious. And so I poked a stick into its stomach and like, you know, there, there, there was full of air and these bubbles of blood came out mm -hmm. and we didn't kill it, but I put a hole in its stomach. And to me, kids don't know that, you know, I thought, oh, I've killed it. And I let it go and it swam away. And, and I felt so much shame. Like that night, I remember I was laying in bed and I just started crying in my bedroom and my mother was in the living room. She goes, what's wrong? And I went out and I crawled up on her lap and I, I put a stick in the froggy. And, I, and I, I was just so ashamed. And I think that might have been the first time. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was weird. But I always remembered it my whole life. It was vivid. And it taught me not to follow those impulses because as a child you don't really know you don't know what's going on with your body sometimes yeah and, and your, your mind feelings and yeah just, you you sometimes react you do something and then right you're like, oh what did i just do so i think that taught me i didn't like the feeling of shame and guilt and so it taught me going forward like process things think before you put a stick into something like yeah. Understand there's ramifications. You could hurt things even though you're not trying to hurt things. So it was a big lesson, but I, I think there's a lot of shame involved in that, that I did that because I always considered myself such a nurturer and lover of nature and all the little critters. Like I'd even let bugs go and I'd always try to save bugs. And, and here I was, I felt like I let them down. That, that this protector yeah. was now the violator. Yeah, and someone it, who they let into right. their community or whatever. Yeah, and I just, yeah. I, I, so I felt, I felt a lot of shame in that. Yeah. Maybe I still do. Maybe I'm going to go drinking now, get real drunk, and come read your son a bedtime story called Jack Daniels. Me, no, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm lashing out. <sighs> <sighs> well, I think it's time for uh, you know what, buddy. Words from a wooden shoe. Are you ready? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an authentic Dutch clog. Have you ever been to Dutch? Yeah. Only, only at dinners. Okay. Don't have to snap at me. I'm just saying. I know. I like to go Dutch at dinners. But the way you came at me was like. I'm just saying. Tough guy suddenly, huh? I mean, you know. You prod around in my past enough, I might become a tough guy. Maybe I'm going to go to the store and buy some tampons with wings and stick one on your face and wrap the wings around your temples so you have a tampon face. Oh, because you're threatening to break my nose and it needs to catch the blood that's going to come out of the nose into the tampon? Is that what you're saying? Probably. Hmm. Are you there, guy? Yeah, you. I don't know. I'm, I think I might have mentally checked out. I felt threatened. Felt like a f I was a frog and you were a stick coming at me. Let's get to the shoe. Yeah. Words from a wooden shoe. Inside this shoe, Jeremiah Watkins. Mm-hmm. Mm, as I mm. live and breathe, Jeremiah Watkins. Mm. Oh, Lord, have mercy on my grilled cheese sandwich, mm. my bacon sandwich, and my bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Lord, have mercy, Jeremiah Watkins. Bless the deep-fried Twinkies and cupcakes and all Hostess mm. products that are in the mm. pantry right now. Oh, Lord mm. Jesus, someone mm. get me a double chocolate glazed donut. Mm. 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 So anyways, this shoe is full of words. And what you do is you reach in, pull out a word, and see if it, it stimulates a memory or a story from your life that you can share with all three of our, with all the viewers. All three? T the two. Reach in words from a wooden shoe with Jeremiah Watkins. Lord have mercy now. What is your word from a wooden shoe? Sure. It says your lotto numbers are 5, 25, 41, and 6. Dude, fuck off. Okay, sorry. Those are my numbers. Okay, sorry. I just I'm playing it for 14 years, and you just gave them away? Okay, sorry. We'll turn it over the other side. Oh, here we go. What's the word say? Oh, it says 
cut yourself. Oh, wow. You ever cut yourself? Like, uh, I think everybody's at some time, point in time impaled themselves or stabbed themselves or <laughs> cut themselves in art class or something. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Mm-mm. Mm. Here we go, gang. This is a... Here we go. This is a... Mm-hmm. I was working at an Italian mm. restaurant. Mm. Bottle of red, bottle of white. I was working at an Italian restaurant. Okay. And I was a waiter there, and I went to go grab something quickly from one counter to the next. Oh, God. It was a linoleum cover that was on the counter that had started to roll up a little bit. Okay. That there was a li- this literally this much space between the wood counter and the glossy top. Oh no. And I went <sighs> and I went to grab it and it was sticking up. It went underneath my thumb. Oh. The lip of it went all like halfway down. God. And <laughs> I literally, it, it was one of the most painful things. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's literally what they do to torture people. Yeah, they tore, there's the bamboo under the f- yeah. fingernails. Yeah. Torture treatment. Went halfway down. I started to bleed and bruise immediately, and I almost passed out on the spot because it was so painful. Oh, my God. They just sit me down. I was like, oh, I don't <sighs> feel good. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that, like, literally, the cut yourself one, that triggered that immediately of that that like that oh. jolt of thinking that you're grabbing just like i was grabbing like a bag or something yeah. but it was up high enough lifted where it went it was just per- it was at the perfect perfect spot. angle and how weird is it that it just it was perfect it went right under the nail I know. Like the, it could have been anywhere else it could have been anywhere on my thumb it would have maybe drew a little bit of blood just oh. from poking it but like it just hit Perfectly. And did it like kill the nail and then it took like took forever like, for it to grow out. But it turned black and then so now when yeah. you're, you're going out with girls, you got like <laughs> black nail. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm God. goth on only one, yeah. one thumb. Yeah. But it, it doesn't look goth. It looks rotten, it doesn't does. it? Yeah. yeah. It looks like something like it's yeah. about to die there. Yeah. Yeah. It's all oh, like dude. purple and bloody and yeah, it's gross. Oh, God. Sounds like you need a summer douche. douche. Just stuff your thumb in the douche bottle. There you go. Mm -mm, Child. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Things are not going to get easier. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I got to douche that thumb now, child. Mm. It's a mile walking. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Buddy, before we roll out of here, tell the good folks, all five, uh, the folks watching. like Five? No, I I, I had a garlic bud in my throat. (laughs) But tell the folks where they can see you. Tell them about your beautiful podcast. I was on uh, Jeremiah's podcast recently. Check it out. We had a riot. Yeah, check out Harlan on Scissor Bros with me and my brother Stevie Weeby. Yeah. Um, he couldn't be here today. He's working on his album at the moment. Yeah, one day we'll have both of you guys on. Yeah, here. That'd be, would love that. Riot. But yeah. check out Stevie's album when it drops on his band camp. Uh, he'll be, I think he's putting it out through there and stuff like okay, that. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you recently did, uh, it'll come out in the next month or two. Uh, you did oh. a stand-up on the spot Oh, episode, yeah, up at, the up at the comedy store. And I felt so bad because I, I, I forget what happened. But that night I, I showed up and blah, 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 blah. And then when I got home, I looked at your text and it said, Harlem, make sure you don't wear a black shirt. And I, re- I looked down and I had worn a black shirt. So okay. I apologize. No, I it's like, okay. Ah. We, we light it in a certain way just in case people wear black shirts. So you're fine. Okay. But the yeah. reason being because the back There's drop a, is draft. So you said it looks like just your head's floating. Oh, it can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Um, but tell them about your um, stand-up comedy uh, yeah. tour, where they can find out about your dates, yeah. all that. Tickets at JeremiahWatkins.com. I'm going to be in uh, Dallas and Fort Worth coming up. Oh, uh, wow. Bakersfield, California, Tacoma, Washington. There's a bunch of different places that I'll be... Um, uh, JeremiahWatkins.com and then uh, I've got a uh, special that's out on YouTube called Daddy um, and come see Harlan and I at the Comedy Store we're there all the time yeah, yeah. I, re- I get to bring you up all the time and, and vice the versa the and yeah. vice versa yeah. yeah yeah we have a good time over there and if you if you never want to hear anything serious between the two of us, just come see us this there is, it is funny this podcast is literally a couple of moments we've known each other for years it's, it's literally the most Mm-hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> serious we've been in years. <laughs> and for some reason, it was hilarious, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, even though I asked you a couple of serious questions, uh-huh. we ended up laughing about it. Yeah. Uh, well, let me hit the theme music, folks. And uh, Jeremiah Watkins, I thank you for being here. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being on the Harlan Highway Podcast. Please check out the kid and all his social media and the scissor brothers podcast hilarious and until next time everybody chicken chow mein baby and amen